Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Dude, I Love That. I'm Liv, and today we're going to be typing characters from a movie that has been in the Netflix top 10 for like a while now, and it is Endless Love. This one is not like a movie that I would typically watch, but I was sold on it because it's in the top 10, which must mean you're loving it right now. And it has Gabriella Wilde and Alex Pettifer, which obviously if you're a girl and you were like in middle school in the mid 2000s, Alex Pettifer was it. So I was like, we have to watch this and see what happens. And I have to say this movie was so interesting in terms of like typing the characters. Wow, the family dynamic, so fascinating. The really interesting tidbit that I'll share with you about Jade and David and like why they're such a good couple. Just so many things to talk about. So let's go ahead and dive in with Jade. So obviously she's very, very sweet. And actually this is a fun point. I have so many notes from this movie. So I'm gonna actually read you most of my notes instead of doing like I normally do where I just kind of like spout off a couple things. No, we're diving all the way in with these notes and bullet points so you can actually get a taste of why these characters are the way that they are. Okay, so I have here, first thing that struck me was that Jade is very sweet. She's very caring and what she does most of the time is complies. And so she will, you know, put down whatever she wants in order to pick up what other people want or will kind of deny the things that she feels led to do in order to keep the peace, which initially to me, I was like, that's very nine-ish. And I kind of had her pegged as a nine for a long time. And then I was like, I think something else is going on here. So we'll get into that. But we can see throughout like the beginning of the movie, she definitely craves adventure, but she's afraid to seek it out. And I don't know if that's because of her brother's death or if it's just what she's always done. And she just kind of is like, oh, well, I'm the youngest, so I don't want to make waves. Again, it kind of feels nine-ish. It's funny too, because in the beginning of the movie at the graduation, her brother basically says like, if you don't get out there and, and mingle, people are never going to know how ridiculous and funny you are, which is hilarious to me because I'm like, I never would have said those words about her. Like as we see her in the movie, or should I say in this time in her life, we don't see that like at all. I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have called her ridiculous or very funny, <laughs> even though she is like, she's funny, but she's not like as funny as he was letting on. She's definitely okay with letting her parents decide things for her. Oh, this is the good one. Okay. So I saw a lot throughout this that she was making decisions from her gut. She seemed to really figure something out and then go for it. And there wasn't a lot of thinking involved. She just was like, this is the right thing to do and I'm going to go do it. And so that ruled out because I was kind of going back and forth between nine and six, but I ruled six out because I don't feel like that's really where her decisions come from. I think she has a six, just not as her main type. Oh, this is fun too. I don't know if anyone else like pays attention to body language between characters, but most times you won't see like a character that isn't close with someone hugging them or being, I have to use the word like physical, it sounds kind of creepy, but you know what I mean. But you don't usually see people hugging others that they're not close to because it's like a personal space thing. We're kind of ingrained to not let people that we don't know into our personal space. So I thought that was actually very interesting. And then we see she's totally going for it with this dance that she and David do at the graduation party and she goes for it. And I feel like a lot of people, if that were me, I'd be like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> Like we're not doing that. I would be so nervous. And she just goes for it and she was totally fine being herself. And I think... Underneath all of the compliance and the need for peace, she's actually very bold and fun and adventurous. And I love that we got to finally see that more from her, like towards the end. She definitely reverts back to complying though. I will say that, but she does end up being able to stand up for herself. And even though she's agreeable, if there's something that she feels strongly about, she's going to put her foot down. Kind of like when David came to the lake house and he wasn't invited. And then they kind of get in that argument with her dad. She's like, no, I invited him he's staying and so I thought that was very interesting oh a couple of other things she has great boundaries she is really good kind of like I just said about putting her foot down when needed and she's also good at expressing her boundaries once she got a little bit more confident and comfortable going with what she wanted she definitely had more of an ability to stand up for her boundaries and then another thing was she says that she dreamt about being in love which is very interesting to me. And for a moment, I was like, is this girl a four? What is happening here? And this is ultimately what kind of led me to choose the type that I ended up going with for her. And she's also very touchy-feely, does not mind PDA. There's several times, well, I, it wasn't like gross PDA, but she definitely was kind of like, yeah, touchy-feely is the best word for it. And most people either are very comfortable with it or not at all. And I feel like she was definitely one that was, you know, she would like hang all over David and didn't care and was just like, she always wanted to be in close physical contact, which is so interesting. So 
with all of this combined, I hope you were thinking about the type two for her of, of going like, okay, all these things are adding up to blank. So I actually gave you a little hint right there. I ended up typing her as a two. Now I think she's a very healthy two that is using both of her arrows a lot, right? So two has a connection to four and a connection to eight. And what I think is she uses that connection to eight, which they go to in stress. But remember, just because someone goes to a certain number in stress does not mean that they only pull on that number when they're in stress. And so I think for her, she uses her eight and that kind of like gets awoken and awoken. Her boldness is awakened. There we go. That's proper. <laughs> so I think we see more of that from her once she's able to come out of this sloth state that she's been in. And again, I'm saying a lot of words that sound like type nine, but I think we need to dig a little deeper and see that maybe that's not so much the case. So I ended up going with two because I feel like she does have that connection to four. She enjoys the grandiose feelings of romance. I think she was able to dive right in with David. Like there was no qualms. There was no, oh, I don't know. Is this going too quickly? Like, should I, should I put off my plans for him? No. She was like, this is it. And she just went for it. And so I think that's that four or that two going to four, excuse me. And I think that she really was able to identify enough green flags for her to be like, I'm going to go all in because I think this is worth it. And that's really where she was making her decisions from. Now, again, I think she does have a lot of that eight in her. I think she's definitely got something going on there that she's really able to pull from that arrow and use it in order to help her enforce the boundaries, help her speak her mind, help her to feel confident in her decisions. And, you know, twos aren't people that are altogether unconfident, you know, like they definitely can be very powerful and able to do whatever needs to be done. And I think they're more charge ahead than people give them credit for most of the time. And so I think that's where it can be difficult deciphering, is she a two that's going to eight or is she a nine with an eight wing? Because I think initially you're like, well, if they have a wing, that's like more prevalent in their life. But honestly, arrows are so important. So make sure if you're a certain type, look at your arrows and make sure that you're using both those areas because honestly, we're supposed to be you know, utilizing all of our centers and utilizing the tools we've been given with our personality. And so highly suggest checking that out. Krista has some great info about arrows. And that's actually where like I do a lot of my arrow work from stuff that she says and podcasts. And so if you're interested, check those out. But yeah, I ended up going with that too for Jade, which honestly surprised me, but here we are. And then I decided that her tri-type is probably a 269, although honestly it could be a 268. I feel like we see her flip-flop pretty intensely between wanting to be the peacemaker, wanting to do whatever her parents say and like be very compliant, but she also wants to rebel against, which, you know, kind of feels like you can't quite identify, but I'm just going to lock in a 269 for her because I think that's how she is the majority of the time. So we got to go with that. Okay. Let's talk about David. This is so interesting to me. I'm telling you what, because I actually think that he and Jade have the exact same tri-type, just different arrangement of the numbers. So I knew there had to be a nine in this movie. I just didn't think it was Jade. I thought it was David. And it's so funny because seeing him, there's just such a peace and like, he just kind of lulls you in, you know, nines are really good at that because they're so peaceful. And whenever you get around them, your level of energy just kind of like, slows down and you're just like, okay, this is fun. This is peaceful. And I really think that he did that for Jade in a weird way. He both brought her the peace that she'd been looking for and also helped her to wake up. I think before him, she just was so asleep to going along with what everybody else wanted and not ever listening to her own voice and being like devoid of joy in a way. And I think he, in a weird way, in a, in a total nine way, was able to both wake her up to life and also help her to maintain a peaceful mental state throughout the entire thing. And I, I wonder if because of that, she was able to jump in with him so quickly. That's actually, that would make a lot of sense. Okay. So for David, here are some things that I wrote down for him. He definitely loves to go the extra mile for people that he loves. And if you know a type nine, if you have a type nine friend, oh my gosh, they are the sweetest and they're always so thoughtful and giving and caring. And I think a lot of times that can lead the nine to mistype as a two. And then he really desires a simple life. Like he doesn't want anything extravagant. He just wants to enjoy his life, be at peace and like have the things that he needs. And so again, that feels very nine-ish. Oh, he can also be very sassy when he's confronted. So we see the whole confrontation go down between him and Jade's dad. And he does react quickly. He's definitely like, you know, the nines in the gut triad, right? With along with the eight and the one. And people don't really realize that 
yes, the nine is peaceful. The nine's very calm and put together and steady and stable, but they will explode if things get to a certain point. So it's good for the nine to always be talking things through, being honest with their feelings and not shoving things down because what will happen is they will just explode and it will not be good. And so make sure if you have a nine in your life, ask them how things are going, talk with them, be invested in that because they're always busy investing in others and being like the gentle spirit of the group <laughs> for lack of a better word. And so sometimes they just need someone to be like, how are you doing? What is going on with you? Tell me about it. And I'm telling you, they will appreciate it so much, but we can see that in this movie, things kind of get so built up to where David ends up just losing it. And then obviously he punches Jade's dad not that he did not deserve it because I think he did. I hate that dude. But, you know, it does get to that point where he's just like, I can't take any more. I have to do something about it. And that's why I said nines being in the gut triad, they do act from their gut. Once it gets to that certain point, they just go for it. And so I do think that he's mostly a nine wing one, but when stuff goes down, he's definitely more nine wing eight. And then, oh my gosh, I love this part. He is so long suffering. And that's a quality that I think you either realize or you don't about the nine. But I'm telling you, they are so long suffering. And I think it's really sweet that we see in that movie where, you know, he's been waiting for Jay this whole time. And he's like, I'm not going to just go rush out there and go try and find somebody else just to fill a void in my life. I'd rather sit with the void. This is actually really interesting. Maybe I'm feeling more like type four for him uh, in his tri type, not his main type. That's interesting. But also nines, twos, and fours can all tend to mistype for each other. So it happens. But yeah, very long suffering. He's very careful. He's also more soft-spoken, which is kind of what ended up making me choose nine instead of two or six, which I think he has in his tri-type because he gets his message across and is able to have impact without raising his voice, without ever having like intense inflections on his words. And so that's something that I really was like, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. That makes sense. So anyways, like I said, I did choose a nine to six as his tri-type. And like I said, too, I think his wings, you know, he flip flops, but everybody should be using both their wings because remember, if you're just using one wing, you're going to have problems. You need both your wings. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about Jade's brother, Keith. This was so mind blowing for me because you see a lot of him like verbalizing what's going on in his mind and talking it out. There's actually a scene where Keith, his girlfriend, Jade and David are all on their way to like, I think it's a little party or something. And he's in the car and he's basically playing a conversation out loud of what it would be like with him and his dad. And he obviously feels very rejected by his dad. He feels like his dad doesn't care about him. Like he's kind of always been like second string. And because he never fit into his father's ideals, he always kind of has felt like a bit of a failure. However, he knows that he's done nothing wrong and he's happy with the life that he's had. And so he's going back and forth all the time between do I want my dad's approval or do I want what I want? And so he flip-flops all the time. And even though he says he doesn't want his approval, he also desperately wants his approval. On top of that, he's also been with his girlfriend, Sabine, for years and years and years. And the dad jokes that he's never called her his girlfriend. They've just always been together. And then of course, at the end, they end up married, which I think is so funny. I feel like there are some types where you're probably not going to like date. You're going to just like be together and it's just such a thing. And then it's one day you're going to be like, I'm engaged. And I think that's kind of what happened there. And I think Keith is definitely the hallmark counterphobic six. I really did choose that for him because he has a lot of the six tendencies where it's like, I want others to be proud of me. I want to feel like I have that support system. But he also simultaneously knows that he's not going to have that because his dad has these expectations for him that he's never going to be able to fulfill because it's impossible. And so he flip flops back and forth. But ultimately, he decides to push back against his dad. And that's where I'm like, okay, the phobic six, which would be the self-preserving or the social subtype six would be more likely to comply with what the dad wanted and try so hard to kind of fit like a square peg into a round hole in order to keep the peace. The counterphobic six, which is the sexual or one-to-one -one subtype six, what they're going to do is they're going to push back and really dig their heels in and be like, you're not going to control me. I don't want to have this situation that you want for me. So I'm going to do something opposite. But deep down, they are disappointed that they've just lost their system of support. Okay. We've talked so much about Jade's dad. We have to go ahead and type him. So here are some things that I wrote down for him. He is exacting. He's definitely got high standards for his family. And it's funny because I feel like in a way he has high standards for them, but he won't really live up to them himself, which kind of bums me out because I feel like it's not that it's not fair, but it's, it's just like a really sucky way to look at things. 
And then he definitely projects his ideals onto those around him. And he expects everybody to follow or have the same ideals that he has. Now, this is a very common thing for a type one who is in lower levels of health. They're not realizing that everybody has their own sense of what's right and wrong. And so when the one gets to this health level, they try and shove everybody into the same system of belief without regard for what they want, their own unique individual personality, their gifts, talents, and abilities, nothing. It's just like, this is what we're doing. Get with it. There is no get out option. They're just like, get with it. And they kind of operate more from a place of shaming people into what they want them to do when they're in this low of health. So a couple of other things that I noticed, he's very protective of Jade. And I think that's partially because she's his only daughter. And so maybe it's like a little bit more, but he's also very controlling. And this kind of goes into the same thing of like wanting to make his family fit into his ideals. But again, this is something that you're going to see at lower health levels. And someone could be like, oh, is he like a lower health level eight? But really, that's not the case at all. What I actually think is happening is that he's a one with very heavy three influence, and he's just unhealthy right now. I think he's gone through a lot of trauma from losing his son. I think his other son isn't fulfilling what he wanted and isn't like living up to his standards. His wife is so sweet, but maybe there's something going on with their marriage. And then he's basically putting all of his hopes and dreams on Jade, which is so pressure packed. And I feel so bad for her, but that's just where he's at. And he's just, he needs some help, you know? And Hey, we've all had those times. So no judgment. We're just looking at it and saying, okay, you know, this is someone that is in the healthiest spot and that's okay because he ends up realizing it at the end of the movie. And finally, there are some repercussions for his actions, which I think is the key here, because I don't think he would have done a single thing to change had there not been repercussions. And so now there have been, and so he can make the changes necessary in order to get his family back together and really heal those relationships. So if I had to say he's a one with probably a two wing, I think we definitely do see a lot of two with him because you know, he is a doctor, so he's helping people. And I think in a way, he really does value relationships. And maybe that's why he's been so hard on the family, because he wants these relationships to stay solid. And he feels like, I've just lost someone when it was like out of my control. I couldn't save this person. So now I'm feeling like I have to over control in order to keep my environment secure. And so, you know, two is they really do value those relationships. It's very important to them. Their life kind of centers around others. And so Maybe that's what's happening there with that. That's actually kind of a cool part to look at. Okay, we're going to finish up with Jade's mom. She is like the sweetest thing ever. I feel so bad for her this whole movie because she's just like a gem of a woman and she's going through it. And so words that I used to describe Jade's mom, precious, gracious, kind-hearted. She's just, like I said, a freaking gem. So you can see that throughout this movie, She's very much the one that's talking to Jade's dad and trying to reframe things for him and trying to show him that, no, what's going on here is okay. It's normal. And we have to support Jade. And we also like for Keith too, you know, she tries to stand up for him, but it kind of feels like maybe a bit of a lost cause at this point because the dad's made up his mind. And so we always see her trying to reframe and really show him all sides of the story, which is the hallmark trait of a type nine. And I feel like this woman, she is like the most adorable thing because she's like a nine wing one that is trying to keep the peace while also trying to speak her mind and be that, you know, wise counsel for her husband. And, you know, in a way, she kind of feels like she's talking to a wall. It's like, he's just not getting it. The kids, I'm trying to like protect them because I care about them. I don't know what else to do. And she's like, David's so sweet. And I want to show my approval of him. But I also don't want to like disrespect my husband in terms of he's got his own point of view and I wouldn't want to bulldoze over him or anyone else that would have an opinion and be like, this is right. And so I think she's kind of trying to balance all of that. And it's definitely a juggling act for sure. And we see her at the end. She really comes into her growth of a type three. So remember nine goes to three in health. And what she does is, hey, you need to figure yourself out. I'm leaving. I can't deal with this any longer. You've been so disrespectful to me and our family. And this can't go on until you figure yourself out. And I love when nines finally are like, I've had enough and I'm worth it to stand up for myself and say something because, you know, a lot of times with their desire to keep the peace, they'll just keep not saying anything and shoving it down and whatever. But that's ultimately so disastrous in the end, you know, you're going to get to a point where kind of like I said with David, you just explode and that's not healthy. And so we see her take the very healthy approach of realizing, okay, I see what needs to happen here. 
he's going to have to have a bit of an ultimatum situation in order to get himself on track. And she cares enough about him, herself, and the kids in order to make that decision. And so again, I just think she's the shining example of a healthy nine. And I think I said this already, but I do think she has a one wing. And you know, from time to time, she uses her eight wing, but I think she's definitely more of a nine wing one. And actually think about this. That's so cool. Jade's basically dating like the male version of her mom. And I think it's because, you know, her mom has been like this very peaceful, steady force in her life and was probably very caring and helpful while she was grieving her brother's loss. And she's just probably been that person in the family that she could always go to. And so I think it's really sweet that we see that so much with David. Oh my gosh. Honorable mention really quickly, Mace. What a guy. I freaking love him. He's like my favorite character in this whole thing. But I ended up typing him as a seven wing eight because dude is always looking for a good time. He's always able to positively reframe, which is very seven. And I gave him the eight wing because he is bold. He just like does whatever he wants, whatever's on his mind, he says. And I think he's a perfect compliment to David. But anyways, that's it for this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed. Be sure and follow along on Instagram at Hey, it's Liv James. And of course, if you want the video version of this podcast, definitely check it out on YouTube or Spotify. And remember, check back on Friday for a brand new episode because I upload every Tuesday and Friday. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.